Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome video. So let's get cracking. Friends, right here we have a Tinkercad project that I have done in the traditional design area. People often ask me, hey, why would you use code blocks? Friends, let me show you. Of course, the first step is create and new code block. That little shape I showed you was a drill bit holder. So I'm going to name my file that way. And then code blocks works like this. We can bring out parts. We can expand the parameters. And when you hit play, they appear. They line up at zero, zero. So we always have to move them later to get them up on the work plane. Friends, we are going to use some special code to make this part turn into the part I showed you a moment ago. The first thing I need to do is go over here to variables. And we're going to create a variable called gap. Type gap tell it OK and that gives us the variable and some set options that we can use for it. Now the gap is going to be the distance that was between each of those holes. I'm going to choose a gap of four. Now we also need the length and width which we could type but I'm going to make them adjustable. So create variable length and create variable width. Once again, I'm going to bring those out. I'm going to choose set. I'm going to switch to length. And I want the length to be 23. That's what it was in the other project. I'm going to then bring up another set. This one is going to be the width, which is along X. And in that project, it was a crazy 57. Now we also need to set the holes. So I'm going to create another variable called hole and tell it OK. Once again, bring out the set, switch it to the word hole, and then we pick the size of the radius of our shapes. So I'm going to do four and press enter. So let's real quickly get our shape up to speed. If I go to the variable area, I want to put the length in the length box. I want to put the width in the width box. I do know that the height of mine was three. I'm going to set the edge to two. That was another number that I had as well. And now when we speed this up and hit play, bingo, that looks just like what I showed you earlier. Like I said, it is at zero, zero. We'll move it when we're all done. Now, like I said a moment ago, this is at zero, zero. And for moving all these pieces, I want to slide it to the right so that this edge is at zero, zero. We're going to do that with the move command and some really cool math. Check it out. We're going to bring out a math chunk and just lay it on the bottom here. Switch it to division. Notice we need to move half as far to get it at zero, zero. So what we're going to do is bring out that width variable and we're going to divide it by two. And then we're going to grab right under the math and we're going to set it in the X location. Now check this out when we hit play, bam, it slides over instantly so that we're ready to put our holes in. We're going to do that with some fantastic math, bring out a count with, and we are going to add another shape. It'll be a cylinder. Once again, when you drop it inside there, expand its properties and note, we have to give it the radius. This is going to be the hole variable. Drop it in just like that. Leave the height, change the sides to 64 so that it's smooth, and the rest of them can stay blank. We do want to make it a hole because we will cut this out later. Now, just like the other piece, we do need to move it. So find your move command, drop it underneath. Now we need to create the amount we move, and we're going to do this with a fancy formula. Once again, start by doing create variable and we're going to call this variable move. We are going to do a set move and we're going to put this one right in between. Notice we can break it apart and then put it there whichever way you want, but switch it to a set move. And then we're going to bring out a math operation and we're going to do a certain amount. I'm going to tell you we'll start with five because we'll adjust this on the fly and it's going to be five plus the gap. Now we can lift this up and put it in that block. I do want to remind you when we put these in, it's always the left edge that goes in. If you try the red, right edge, it just won't work. 
so the left edge drops in the block. Now we can grab the new move variable and put it right here. I'm going to just show you how this works. If we hit play, you can see it puts all five in the same spot. This isn't bad, but it's not what we want because we have not done the magic part of this where we change the variable every time it repeats. So here's how we do that. Move to your variable area, find the change, and then the first one we're going to change is the hole. I want to change its size by negative one. We're going to do another change right below it, and this time we're going to change the move and we're going to once again do some fancy math. Bring out a math chunk. And the first thing we're going to do is fix this radius issue. So we're going to take 2 times that hole variable to get the diameter. Because we want to go all the way across that hole for our move. Then we're going to bring out another math chunk. And we're going to do plus the gap. So now we can take this entire first chunk of math. Notice I'm lining up the left edge, and we're going to plop it in there. So the math is for every new hole, we're going to do the diameter plus the gap to get to the next one. We're going to drop that right there for how much move changes. Now we do not have room for 10 holes, so we're going to set this to 5. If we hit play, bingo, we have got five holes all spaced pretty neat along our project. Because of code blocks, if I want to change that gap to five and hit play, they instantly respace. I could also click on the hole and change by negative 0.5 so that they really only change by one. Check it out, hit play, and now these would have subtracted one that turns out pretty slick. The final piece is how we adjust them. If we change this, see how this is larger than this side? Let's change it to three and hit play. Bang, it is spaced evenly, adjustable, and totally awesome. The final thing is when you're happy with your part, you need to go back to modify and you need to create group. I'll hit play, you'll watch it draw, they'll group, it cuts out, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to finish by moving it up. Remember our height was 3, so I'm going to move it up 1.5 and press enter. Bingo. A sweet drill bit holder using adjustable code that you can work with again and again. Friends, if you want to 3D print it, it's so simple. You can click up here and choose export. STL, I always store mine in my 3D modeling folder and I'm gonna hit save. Friends, right there is an awesome example of why it's useful to design using code blocks. Once you finish, don't forget if you click back here on the Tinkercad workspace, it will forever be saved to the cloud. If you wanna share it with the world, it is so simple, click up here on properties. Of course, in my description, I'll mention that the tutorial is coming soon. Of course, give it some tags. Just a reminder, if you ever tag something with HLMT23, I check that tag almost every day, and of course, I'll give you a reaction. Finally, make sure you set it to public, and then I always choose attribution, no derivatives, because I want you to come up here, follow the tutorial, and gain some epic skills. Make sure you prove you're not a robot, and hit save changes. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. I've got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of awesome categories. On the left, you'll also find day one starters. You'll also find some of my favorites and Tinkercad essentials. On the bottom right-hand corner, friends, you will find a built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Friends, I do also want to recommend the link to the Tinkercad. CAD community discord as you can see we've got more than 800 members and it is a fantastic place to talk everything tinkercad and of course friends if you enjoyed the video please give it a like please also hit that share button so more people can learn about hl mod tech don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.